Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure you all understood well what Dr. Mishkosi said, understood uh, really deeply. It took me two years, so I, I, I will repeat it for you. <clears throat> First, uh, his, he has two basic recognitions, which are as follows. First, from his high-resolution atmospheric transfer code, so-called hard code, uh, he realized that there are certain new correlations uh, between some radiative flux components in the atmosphere, uh, which are still unknown, which were unknown. Second, he recognized that the widely used classic solution for the surface temperature calculations is mathematically incorrect and physically deeply problematical. These two results together started him on a way which led to new equations on radiative transfer. These new equations and the new greenhouse theory is not theory in the sense that are, there are not suppositions, there are not declarations, they are based on observations and, or, and on uh, simulation, computer simulations of the real atmosphere. <clears throat> Have you ever fallen in love with the mathematical theory? Because I did. Uh, Einstein's famous spirit uh, formula means that there is an upper limit for velocity, which exactly which one part defines and the other part part uh, um, exact, exactly reproduces the real uh, measured tau, uh, 1.86 of the Earth's atmosphere. Let's see shortly uh, how this, I think, revolutionary equation was derived. Sorry? But outgoing, outgoing long wave radiation waits in a, in a, in a, a long term and in global mean, and in if the Earth's atmosphere system is in a radiative equilibrium with the surrounding space, it should be equal to the available incoming shortwave energy. So let's see how shortly uh, this revolutionary equality was derived. Obviously, it, it was published in a in a, uh, he, he published in a, in a, uh, a peer-reviewed uh, 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 journal uh, last year. So, back. We are talking about, about these foxes. Uh, here, is the, here is the typical picture. Here is all what is needed, the incoming short wave, outgoing long wave, uh, other uh, the upward, the upward and downward uh, uh, clear sky flux density components. Uh, P null is the sum from the from the uh, uh, geothermic energy, human energy production, and the like. Uh, in the case of the Earth, is the one third percent, one third percent of the of the uh, of the F null. So it's, it used to be omitted, but in the correct picture, is it uh, is there? So. The basic results of the theory. He realized the equality of two clear sky long wave infrared global uh, mean radiation flux components. Uh, the e atmospheric, uh, atmospheric absorbed, AA, and the downward emitted uh, AD. So here, these two, the atmospheric absorbed long wave emitted from the earth, from the surface, and the surface uh, uh, energy which comes back from the atmosphere. This equality, it's not a, uh, uh, it's not, not from, 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 from uh, his mind, it's from his heart code, uh, he, he actually uh, derived it. The uh, similarity in magnitude is typical in, in the uh, uh, common flux distribution estimates, in the, in the well-known distribution estimates, but no one knew, no one knew uh, till now that they are equal. How, uh, how strictly is this uh, equality holds, uh, he pointed out in his presentation, and uh, you, uh, you can see it in his paper. So, having this, 
<clears throat> having this, he, uh, he, he can go on. So this is a cornerstone. This is, I, as I see, this is the fixed point of Archimedes, Archimedes. So if you have a new strict equation, an equality between fluxes in the Earth's atmospheric system, you can go on. You may find others. And he did. From this result, it, re result it, is, it follows by simple arithmetic. Uh, I refer here to the model, again, what, what he used. Uh, the two other net flux components must be equal. These are the, in the second line. The left, left side uh, is the uh, net heating of the atmosphere. The right side if the, is the net heating of the Earth. So if these two components are equal, the sum of it, both of them, both of them use the same energy, energy source, the f null, as the incoming energy. So the sum of them is, must be equal with the inco incoming energy, which is in, in the set conditions uh, in the radiative equilibrium is equal to the OLR. It's not a necessary, but on a long, on a long term, it, it works. It, as a consequence, you may, we said in the previously that this one and this one are equal, right? They are equal. So the sum of them is here. And the, the SG, the ground temperature, we are talking about membership as is the flux. The, the is uh, strictly, strictly connected to the F null and the OLR, right? So here he proved, he proved that in certain conditions, which are hold in the Earth's atmosphere, uh, the Earth maintains a balanced greenhouse effect which is on its maximum. It is saturated. Either any shift in the radiation equilibrium, uh, the, it, you put, you put more, more uh, CO2, more infrared absorbent into the system, it must go back into its equilibrium point somehow and somewhere. Who knows the, uh, the time scale? It's, it's a problem, obviously. But it's a radiation, so it, 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 I, I don't think it's a too long term. Probably, probably months is, or, or, or some years, but it's not only a guess. Uh, it must go back. It must go back to, to the uh, equilibrium point. That is, that is, and that's the main point. If you put extra absorbent, long wave absorbent, that CO2 or methane or other else into the system, it must remove another abs uh, long wave absorbent from the system. Which one? Water vapor. It, uh, the energy minimum pr principle and the energy conservation principle uh, lead to uh, more intense hydraulic cycle, probably, more rainfall. Somehow the system must uh, uh, re remove from itself uh, the uh, optical depths to go back to the equilibrium point. So, according to his balanced manner, the system must remove long wave absorbent from the air for the sake of energy conservation. CO2 increase in the air indicates water vapor decrease, more rainfall. This might have serious consequences. This might have more rainfall, more intense hy hydraulic cycle, less water vapor, vapor in the atmosphere, changes in the pet precipitation patterns, less vapor, wa wa water vapor, the equatorial extra heat would be transported by less moisture to the colder polar regions. This could lead to possible region, regional climate modifications, really. Changes in the global mean cloud cover and cloud out altitude can happen. Alterations in the general circulation, atmospheric circulation could happen, yes. But the global mean temperature remains the same. That's the main point. That's the main point. That is, uh, 
that is where the whole of the system is, uh, is, is working. So I, I don't want to go into uh, too much details. I, I thought I, I have some, some comments on his, uh, some consequences of, of, of paleoclimatic way. Uh, regarding RCHs, there is a well known asymmetry that the higher than now temperatures were short in time and little in, in temperature, but the cooler were longer and, and uh, lasted longer. Uh, why? Why? The question is why? Uh, usually it was said that, uh, that uh, the, the, uh, the temperature, the temperature uh, was the leader and the CO2, uh, obviously the, because of my, my uh, Milankovic cycle or the like, like uh, was the leader of the uh, temperature and then the CO2 went on because of the warmer ocean uh, release is more, more CO2, so some, something like that. That was the old theory. Uh, but why, <clears throat> why never, and, uh, and why never uh, a, a runaway, a, a runaway uh, greenhouse effect didn't happen? What stops temperature? Just exactly three, uh, uh, three degrees over the, pre the present. The answer in the Mishkozi theory, the temperature is driven by available income, in, incoming energy, uh, partly yes. Uh, there is a one-way, one-way temperature CO2 correlation because the warmer ocean surface releases more CO2, but the greenhouse effect works in a balanced way. So uh, uh, more greenhouses, as, as I said, perhaps by human em emissions, leads to necessary removal of, of, of uh, water vapor from the, from the, from the air. So uh, if all the ice sheets melted, all the ice sheets melted, today 10% uh, of the Earth's surface is the, is the cryosphere, you know. The albedo change would rise, would rise the temperature about one half, one half degree. Maybe the same amount could come from a smaller uh, uh, cloud cover. Uh, so together, together, by the warming ice, there is no way to, uh, to rise the temperature more than two or three degrees in Celsius. So it doesn't depend on the CO2 content of the air. It doesn't depend, but depend on the albedo. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Supposing that the ethanol uh, change was small, so the solar activity was small, changes was small, then according to other change, we, we, we can we can uh, understand why why stopped why there is no uh, greenhouse effect. So if the, if this theory is correct, there is no green, uh, runaway greenhouse effect. The overall infrared absorbent amount in the air is controlled by the uh, energy uh, constraints. There are no positive water vapor temperature and CO2 temperature feedback loops. The total infrared absorbent amount in the air is limited to the constraints. The Earth's atmosphere system maintains a saturated, a saturated greenhouse effect through the practically infinite source of, of, of greenhouse gases, water vapor in the ocean surface. The historical temperature li limits can be explained by the lack of ice. Uh, and there is no room for further vast warming. That's, uh, that's my last sentence. The, the human activity could, could complicate the system according to the surface level. So let be the last sentence of this climatology track. I, I, I suppose I, I'm the last speaker here in this track. But <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm finished. This is my last sentence. That's, uh, I, I thought the last sentence is this. This theory is the dot at the end of the global warming story. Thank you. <laughs>